Today, we're designing and making an ocean-inspired lamp with a laser cutter. Lampshades are one of my favorite kinds of projects to make because they're both beautiful to look at and functional when in use. To design this lamp, we'll be using a program called Rhino and start with the file for the funnel light that I designed and shared here on my channel. I'm starting here because it already has the overall dimensions of the frame, cutouts, and length of the pieces that I'll use as reference for this design. First, the design of the ocean-inspired lamp needed more slots cut into the frames to increase the amount of vertical panels that would go into it. The original design had 24 slots, so I decided to add another 8 for a total of 32 in this new design. To do this, I divided 360 by 32 and got 11.25 degrees as the angle for each slot. There are a few ways of copying the slot around a circle, but oddly, I chose the longest method which is copying the slot one by one around the entire perimeter, which I won't even explain because it's not worth it. Here's how you could skip all this tedious copying and a few simple commands. First, we'll select the slot that we want to duplicate around a circle, then go to the polar array function, which you can see me doing here, click on it, turn on the snap to center feature at the bottom left of the interface, hover over the small circle until it says send, then click. Now, in the function command, it's asking how many duplicates we want to create. This design needs 32, so I type that in. Next, there are a lot of options that we could adjust and the only one to review is the one that says 360 because that's the total angle we're duplicating around. A circle is 360 degrees, so the setting is correct. Now, we press enter and have our slots in a matter of 1 minute instead of 10. Let's move on to designing the panels. This is probably the hardest part of the design process because of the constraints that I apply to every project. First, my goal is to always reduce the amount of waste at the end of my projects. Next, the design should be simple and unique so anyone else can cut and build it. Using the panel from the Funnel Light project as reference, the first thing I'll do is pull the slots up a few inches so that the frame where the light bulb socket gets attached will be higher up. This will help anyone using a different lamp base who needs more room to attach the socket. Before we go on, I should tell you that I originally based the design off of a bouquet of flowers, but it ended up looking more like ocean waves, which I loved. Because it was going to be designed as an organic object, I decided to make the form of the exterior edges of the panel curved. To do this, I drew a grid of 1 inch space lines from the bottom to the top of the overall panel and a line down the centers. Using the spline tool, I snapped a point to the different intersections within the grid. The first few attempts had awkward proportions, so I just came up with a few options and tried to imagine what it would look like when duplicated around the entire frame. I chose the panel shape where the curves were more dynamic. Next, I created a 3D model of this design to check whether it came out how I imagined it in my head. Wait until you see how it actually turned out. To create the 3D model, I extruded the frames and panels to the thickness of the mahogany plywood that I'll be using, which was 0.1325 inches. I moved the frames away from the two-dimensional design, rotated the panel from a side view so that it was vertical, aligned the slot in the panel with the slot in the frame, and rotated it in the top view to match. Again, I took the long route here of duplicating the panel around the frame one by one, but the easier way is to follow the steps from earlier by using the polar array command. So let's skip this embarrassing part and just get to the finished model. So what I hoped would look like a beautiful flower ended up looking like a gourd or clay pottery. So I figured, why not try the alternate design that I came up with and compare them side by side. I repeated the same modeling steps, and here's how they look side by side. The first one looks like a gourd, and the second one looks like the bottom half of a light bulb. At this point, I went through all the doubts and frustrating thoughts that many creative people go through when all your effort in a project feels like it's gone to waste. Then, I had a thought. What if I just pulled every other panel up a few inches to add more dynamic curves to the overall form and just relocate the slots in a second piece? All of a sudden, the first design looked amazing with its proportions and dynamic exterior. It reminded me more of ocean waves, more than a bouquet of flowers. I quickly readjusted the locations of the slots, assembled another 3D model, and here's how it came out. There's so much visual interest from the density of pieces, dynamic form created by the continuous curves, and hopefully, the shadows created by the light. Before we can cut the pieces for this project, I take my time laying out the pieces on a sheet to reduce material waste. It's something that I think every maker should do with all of their projects. Now, I gather my materials including 8th inch mahogany plywood, paper masking tape,
utility knife, plastic card to apply the tape, and wood glue, which could also be switched with super glue. I'll also finish my ocean inspired lamp with natural oil, but you can use whatever finish you want. I apply the paper masking tape by unrolling it, aligning the edges with the plywood, and getting the air bubbles out with my plastic card. This will protect the plywood from scorches, burns, and debris from the laser. I load up my Glowforge laser cutter, insert the mahogany plywood, set up my file in the online interface, and start the process of laser cutting. It's been a while since I made a lamp with my laser cutter, and designing this project reminded me of how fun the process of creating one of these projects is for me. As an architect, it combines my experience with creating large spaces and buildings with the process of making and considering the intricate details that need to come together to create a beautiful end product. Sometimes, the result isn't what I originally planned or expected, but there's always a new idea, technique, or detail that I learned through the process of making. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge laser cutter for yourself, I'll share a link in the description section of this video that'll get you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. With all the pieces cut, I stacked the panels based on the sheets that they were on and placed them on my work table. Then, I remove all the paper masking tape while keeping the panels together so they don't get mixed up. If they do, just remember that the only difference are the location of the slots. Using a lint-free cloth, I apply a natural oil finish to the surface of the frames and panels. It's easier and quicker to do this step now instead of waiting until the entire piece is assembled. Since I'm applying the finishes before the product is assembled, I'll be using Maxi Gear Super Glue to join the panels onto the frames. To assemble this ocean inspired lampshade, I keep both of the panels in separate piles and start by applying super glue in the slots of one panel. I align the lower slot in the panel with the frame that has a cutout for installing the light fixture and I press them together. I repeat this with the top frame and the top slot in the panel. Next, I take the second panel type and apply super glue in the two slots. I align them with the slots in the frames next to the first piece that we installed and I join them together. Now we just repeat this step with the remaining panels until the entire product is assembled. With the frames and panels assembled, we just need to install the light socket and bulb and the ocean inspired lamp is complete. I love the warm orange and brown tones from the light reflecting off of the natural finish of the mahogany plywood. The variations of color and wood grain texture in the surfaces of the wood panels creates a beautiful contrast of light to dark areas. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out the wood products playlist on my channel and consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.